the best advice I can give to your listeners is to follow your YouTube channel. To be honest, what you're teaching your adjuster is to be not only on the rosters, but how to rise to the top to be on the first call for the rosters. In this video, I interview Barry Parks from Housh & Company as part of our ongoing coverage of the 2020 NACA convention. Also, I explain step-by-step step what I would do if I had to start over from scratch as an IA, knowing everything I know. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, say hi to your mom. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Barry Parks from Housh & Company at the 2020 NACA convention. He sat down for a brief interview to tell you about the benefits of attending the NACA conference, his least favorite and most favorite parts about being a property adjuster, and his best advice for new adjusters. And here's Barry. So thank you, Matt, for having us. Uh, my name is Barry Parks. I'm the National Account Director for Housh & Company. We are an independent adjusting firm that handles property and casualty claims uh, since 1948. So the reason we like NACA is because we find it's a great resource for us to find individual claims adjusters throughout the country that have come here to further their education, to stay up to date on what's going on in the industry. When we can find and partner with those types of adjusters, people who invest in themselves, that better helps us respond to our clients and what their needs are. Okay, so my least favorite thing is seeing the devastation that comes upon all the families after a major event. The displacement, the family uh, disconnect, the uncertainties of what's going on is probably my uh, least favorite thing about being an independent adjuster. But one of my favorite things, of course, and not to be corny, is to be able to help them if we do our job right, both keep the promise that the insurance company has that they're insured and quickly get them back into their homes and their lives back. That's something that I think I like the best. The best advice I can give to your listeners is to follow your YouTube channel. To be honest, what you're teaching your adjusters is to be not only on the rosters, but how to rise to the top to be on the first call for the rosters. And the stuff that you're, the, the education that you're giving them is really helping us bring them to the top and use them more frequently because of their knowledge and their passion. When we can find adjusters that have the same passion that we have in claims, that helps us be more comfortable with who we're gonna put out to our clientele. Thanks, Barry. A viewer named Carl asks, if you were starting over, what would your short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals be as to what kind of firm you would work for? Thanks for the great question, Carl. I'm gonna hit those specific points in my answer, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about exactly what I would do if I had to start over as an IA, completely from scratch, now, today, but I still had all my knowledge about the industry and how it works. Here it goes. First things first, I would take a really hard look at the industry and ask myself if this is something I really, really wanted to get into. And the reason I say this isn't because it's not a good career path to follow, it's a great career path. I say this because I know that if I'm going to choose a direction, I'm the type of person who has to go all in. What I know about this industry is that first and foremost, it's feast or famine. And often the greatest rewards come from putting in some truly murderous hours, many long weeks and months in strange towns and cities far, far away from home, and dealing with people who have just had major catastrophic losses and who may have a dim view of insurance companies and adjusters. It's not easy work and it's definitely not for everybody, but it's for me. Do I have some special talents or advantages that other people don't have? I don't. I'm just a guy a dude, a bro, a fella. And I'll be honest, this job trained me to be persistent and consistent. Because there was a major incentive, a major reward for working very hard and being as good as I possibly could be, I learned how to put in hours that I wouldn't have dreamed of doing back when I was getting paid by the hour. If I didn't kick butt at this, I wouldn't make any money. It's really as simple as that. So I'd have to ask myself, do I want to kick butt and work harder and longer than anybody else so that I can make an uncommon income? And I would tell you to ask yourself the same thing. And I'll say it again, this job isn't for everybody. So before you spend thousands of dollars on training and gear and weeks and months of traveling around to conferences and carrier certifications, just because you heard that this was a really high paying job, understand that only the people who take it seriously and keep working long after other people have quit for the day make that kind of money. You can't just show up and make the big bucks. 
It only goes to those who work their butts off. Okay, so I've decided that yes, this is for me and I'm gonna go all in on property claims. The very next thing I would do is get my home state or designated home state license and then pick up the Midwestern licenses followed by Florida and New York. Pretty straightforward. Then I would get the best training I could get my hands on and that I could afford. Now honestly, if I had to take months or years and save up to go to veteran adjusting school in Arizona, I would. Why? Why not? Doctors and surgeons spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on school and they wait years, sometimes more than a decade, before ever earning a paycheck. If it means a difference between having a solid chance at starting my career off well or winging it with a high risk of failure on my first CAT deployment or daily assignment, then yes, I'm going to do everything in my power to stack the odds in favor of my success. So why VAS? Why not one of the dozens of other adjuster schools or heck, some of the free or low cost training that some IA firms offer? First off, let me say that yes, the schools that have week or 10 day training are gonna provide an excellent hands-on experience, especially for people who have little to no experience handling claims for insurance companies. The thing that really sets Veteran Adjusting School apart is that it teaches students how to run claims not just do a claim. There's a big difference. When you do a claim, you scope damage, make a coverage decision sometimes, you write an estimate, so you have to know construction policy exactimate, right? Running claims, that's a whole different skill set. You have to understand time management, efficiency, workflow, time blocking, routing, scheduling. Veterans provides an immersive simulation of what it's like to be on CAT and to run claims. Yes, you're gonna learn exactimate, damage ID, scoping, and all that but much more important is that you'll start to build your skills running claims. And running claims is repetitive, so it's not like one day is that much different from the last, but it's imperative that you show up to your first CAT deployment or daily claims assignment, understanding how to manage your time and all the tasks you have to do as an adjuster. It makes doing your claims infinitely easier. But what if you don't have 20,000 bucks laying around and it would take a lot longer than a few months to save it up? Is there an alternative? Yes. Absolutely. Spend a few thousand dollars on a shorter term adjuster school. There are many out there and they are really good at what they do. That is giving you critical skills and knowledge of how to do claims. Then I would take what I learned at an adjuster school and I would build out a daily practice schedule for myself. I'm not talking trying to write total losses or building overlapping spiral staircases or sketching the White House, okay? I'm talking about putting in the time to build my skills as an adjuster one bite at a time. So I will take the scenarios from my adjuster school training and I'm gonna practice them on my own home or a friend's home. Simple stuff, water spot on ceiling, scope that loss, take photos, write the estimate, write a diary entry and a general loss report. Take an hour, three or four times a week just to come up with a new scenario. This will get me used to using my gear, taking and labeling photos and using Xactimate over and over and over again. The point is this, if I get a week's worth of training and then never practiced, it might be months before I get a real claim in my hands. I'm not gonna remember much from that training. The, the net effect would be that I might as well have not gone to the training at all. And the same thing goes for Xactimate. I know that unless I'm using Xactimate and practicing my skills often, I'm going to lose them. And then what happens when seven months after my adjuster boot camp, when I haven't touched Xactimate since that training and I finally get the call, I'm going to crash. And it's not gonna be pretty. I might as well have lit $100 bills on fire, right? So practice makes perfect. Okay, so I'm trained up and I've got a handful of license. What now? Well, let's get on some rosters. I personally would plan to attend NACA for sure and I would interview with every possible firm I could and then I would pick the best ones for me and get signed up. And to answer Carl's question more directly, choosing a firm is a bit of a personal thing. Listen, this is a person to person job. You'll find that you click with some people more than others. I'm not gonna pick a firm based on the split or how good the fee schedules are or anything like that. I will go with a firm that has a company culture that fits me. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you go to NACA and you absolutely should, when you start sitting down with firms, you'll see what I mean. And you need to be interviewing them, not just the other way around. Yes, you need to have your qualifications lined up before you interview with anybody, show up ready for sure, but ask them about things that are important to you. Do they value charitable giving at their company? Are they forward looking with technology? Are they working to create a workflow experience for adjusters that makes sense and it's easy to understand? I'm gonna be truthful with you, this part isn't as hard as it may seem or that it may be in other industries. The thing is this, you can have a solid gold resume that ticks all the boxes that a hiring manager at a firm wants to see. 
But the true test of you and your abilities is whether or not they can count on you to turn in quality claims fast. If you can't do that, all the construction knowledge, Xactimate certifications, and policy understanding is not gonna save you. This is what I mean by running claims. If you can't run claims, you're out. So after I've gotten on a bunch of rosters, I'm going to continue my education and continue my claims handling practicing at home. So what's the next piece? The next piece is getting carrier certifications. For many carriers, especially the bigger ones, you can't touch a claim until you've passed their adjuster certification. Some companies even have a certification for commercial and farm and ranch beyond the regular general certification for adjusters. Your IA firms are where you're going to get this carrier specific training. You'll learn their estimating guidelines, cycle time re requirements, and sometimes their third-party claims management software, which may be different than exact analysis or Xactimate, and you gotta do it. So once you get an email or saying, congrats, you're on the roster, call in and ask about all the carrier certifications that they offer that make sense for you to get, and then go get them. Spend the money to travel, all that. But hey, welcome to the world of the property adjuster. You'll be staying in a lot of hotels. And speaking of which, I'm gonna get signed up with a bunch of hotel rewards programs. They're free, and the points you earn can get you free nights and cookies at check-in. I'm gonna sign up with Intercontinental, which is Holiday Inn, Staybridge, Candlewood Suites, and I'm gonna sign up with Wyndham, which is Ramada, La Quinta, Super 8, and Best Western. They've really upped their game recently, and I've stayed at several of their properties and have been really impressed. Get as many as you can. I'll put it this way. In 2012, I had so many Intercontinental points from staying at Holiday Inn Expresses and Stay Bridges that I was able to book the presidential suite at the Beverly Hills Intercontinental Hotel for three nights, free. I had an ambassador level membership or some crazy business. Okay, from here, I'm going to nurture the relationships that I've built with my firms and the other adjusters that I've met in social media and at conferences, trainings, and certification classes. I'm gonna to touch base every couple of weeks. Wondering what to say when you call in and you really, all you really wanna know is, is there any work? Give them something. Don't just call in and say, hey, got any work, man? Be picking up more licenses and certifications of all kinds. And when you get that new license or your California earthquake certification, call the firm and say, hey, just call and check in once you guys know I've got my New York license. I'd love to help out in any way that I can. So if you have a need, I'm ready to go. And then after that, I'll just sit by the phone and wait for a storm. I'm just kidding. I haven't quit my day job yet, but I'm going to start looking for other work that will keep food on the table and also be easy to pick up and quit at a moment's notice. If I'm all in on a career as an independent claims adjuster, I'm likely gonna line up some work driving for Uber, running auto appraisals, doing photo assist assignments. Once this work can cover my basics, I'm probably gonna put in my two week notice at my regular job so that when the call comes, I'm not quitting with one hour notice. I'm happy to burn the ships in the harbor, but I never like to burn bridges. Okay, then I wait for the call to go on a storm, but I've set myself up for the best chance of success. I've covered my income needs and I've positioned myself to jump up and go at a moment's notice, which is what this gig is all about. Question of the day, what do you think? Sound like the life for you? If so, and you're ready to take the next steps, head on over to adjustertv.com slash start. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. And cookies at check-in. Oh, my neck just popped. I'm gonna turn my head.